Oh my god! <laughs> but, oh. How's it going everybody? Datodoi here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Dragon Ball game, Super Dragon Ball Heroes World Mission. Now I'm sure a lot of you know, but the reason I'm calling it the new Dragon Ball game is because Dragon Ball Heroes has actually existed in Japan for a long time already. Over there, it's a pretty popular arcade machine that involves the use of real physical cards. It was never brought over to the West though for a multitude of reasons, mostly because the arcade scene over here isn't as popular, and they felt that the game would be far too confusing for that audience. You only need to go to the comment section of any Dragon Ball Heroes promotional anime episode to understand that they were probably correct in thinking that there would be some initial confusion among some of the Western fans. How can Super Saiyan 4 can make evenly to Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan? I'm just here because my friend made me. When are these episodes going to Crunchyroll? Oh my lord, it's Super Saiyan 4. That's part of the reason why World Mission is so cool though. It's finally a game that's coming over to the West with a new story mode, and it's on both the Switch and Steam. I mean, just the fact that we can finally get our hands on a game that we can understand ourselves and really start playing and enjoying as Dragon Ball fans might be enough to drop the $60 to buy it. Just look at some of these positive reviews on Steam. The game is slow and ugly, but I am so happy we have a Dragon Ball Heroes game in the West. Wait, wait, these are the positive one, right? Outdated graphics, check. Somewhat clunky outdated UI, check. AAA pricing, check. Are you, are you sure these are the positives? So as it turns out, a lot of the reviews out right now are from people that knew what Heroes was, were excited for it for a long time, and are just now getting their hands on it. Not to say there's anything wrong with that, it just isn't really too helpful to somebody that has never heard of it before, and is looking for information to decide whether or not it's the game for them. So that's what I'm making this video for. I'm gonna play through a little bit of Dragon Ball Heroes, tell you what it is and what it isn't, and then give you my thoughts on whether or not I think it's worth dropping the 60 bucks for right now. So let's go ahead and start by talking about the obvious thing. This game is not really a looker. The models can look extremely weird sometimes, and the way the story mode goes about transitioning them from one face to another can lead to some pretty hilarious moments. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? I do think it's important to note that the way the game looks isn't a limitation of the software or time, this is just how the arcade game looks. If every character had to look like the best video game incarnation of them so far, then Dragon Ball Heroes probably wouldn't have the time or resources to make over a thousand cards playable in the game. Speaking from a personal standpoint, while I do find some of the models to be very funny to look at, like my poor little android avatar over here, something just looks wrong about this guy's face. I ultimately winded up kind of liking the game's presentation overall because it keeps a consistent style and the constant transformation mechanics of the characters, the sheer amount of cards, the effects when you perform an ultimate move. Overall, whenever something cool was happening on the screen, it was a lot of fun to watch. So at the end of my play experience, it's not like I wanted to turn the TV off and never look at the game again. While we're on the topic of ultimate moves, now's as good a time as any to let you know that Dragon Ball Heroes really isn't an action-packed Dragon Ball game. Most of your enjoyment is going to come out how you strategize your plays within the card game itself, building decks where your equipment and characters as well as their passives work well enough together to form a really strong team, and wiggling your joystick really fast to make sure your effect does maximum damage. Other than that, the only real impact you're going to have inside of the card matches themselves is timing button presses to decide whether or not your attack will be successful or whether your guard will be successful. If you win on attack, you get the full damage of your move, and if you win on defense, you guard a little bit of their move. Don't get me wrong, it's a simple system, but when you're already in an intense card match, sometimes the added intensity of having to make sure you win this button press in order to make sure you live another turn can be kind of fun. And it's a good thing that I personally enjoyed it because without enjoying the card game aspect of it, going through the extensive story campaign just would not be feasible. I won't go into detail of the story mode to avoid spoilers, but it didn't really keep my attention on its own. I more so was just in it for the harder matches and unlocks so I could get more card packs. Which brings us nicely into my favorite mechanic in the game, hardcore gambling. After you get enough tickets from completing any missions and events, you can head on down to the gotcha shop and spend some tickets to unlock card packs. I should also mention that there are no microtransactions in this game. If you want to unlock everything, you gotta play through everything. Regardless of that though, there is a wide variety of sets and cards to buy, and you can look through all of them to see which cards you can possibly get and choose out a few that you really want to go for. As for me, I really wanted this Ultra Instinct Goku, so I decided to use all my 10 tickets at that point to go hard on this banner. Instead, I got a bunch of basic cards. Yeah, my first pack was a super bust in this game. After that, I didn't have enough tickets for a full 10 card
card pack, so I just started buying cards individually and pulled a normal rare and then a normal rare and then actually pulled an ultra rare Vegeta. After that, I also used my guaranteed rare ticket to get this Goku card, so my team was pretty much set. Of course, with a team as stacked as this, the first couple story mode missions weren't really gonna do anything for me, so I decided it was high time I hop into my first ever network battle match. Within these, you can select whether or not to do an online battle or local battle, and then once you pick online, you can choose whether or not to do ranked or unranked. And since ranked was an unlock, I had to go ahead and hop into a normal one. And because an online match is better experienced through the person actually playing it real time, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to current time Dato Doya. Looks like he chose a Saiyan type avatar. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, this man didn't know I pre-ordered the game. You should have been on the lookout, bro. I already hit up the shop and everything. Yeah, that's my that's my deck. That's the deck I'm rocking with. I even threw on a little Raditz there uh, because he was a super rare card, apparently. Not super rare, but the the rarest I had after these pre-order cards. Say, I can't wait to see what he chooses, man, because this this is gonna be real interesting if he also pre-ordered the game. If he didn't, this might be. It's only been like a couple hours since the game came out, so I'm really not sure what he could have. I don't know. Maybe he got super lucky at the gotcha though. Hey, here we go. It's my team. All right, nice. Couple of go- Oh my god! Bro, is that Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta? And Super Saiyan 3 Teen Gohan? What, what is going on? <laughs> Uh-oh, wait a minute. Maybe I underestimated the man. That's fine, what's his passive? Okay, Team HP up. And more things than I could have read in that time. I think let's lead the pact with, with these two. We'll send him back just for now. No stun. Yeah, why not get him up there as well? Maybe him and... Eh, we'll take him back, we'll take him back. He can go back, and he can go back. Oh my god, he just went all the way back. Does he know something I don't? The, uh, does he know this is gonna be like double damage? Oh, that wasn't a perfect. Yikes. I should really be getting perfects on this guy. Nice, there we go. That's what I'm talking about, dude. This still isn't doing too much. This is all double damage. All right, he's gonna try to hit me with everything now. Yep, there it is. Is this the strap, bro? He's trying to hit me with everything? Oh my goodness. He took the first turn off. He wasn't even interested. All right, perfect defense, here we come. Enemy attack phase. All we need to do is perfectly guard everything and we should be fine. All right, deflected the first. Let's go. Oh my goodness, I don't even think he was trying. Perfect, that's still the 3,000, what the hell? We're dead, we are so dead. Oh no, no. Okay, that is not good for us. Oh no, super attack ready. Ultimate Misanko, I mean the one punch already did enough. Oh my god, pull back on the damage. Counter rush mode? Is this something Ultra Instinct gets? Nope. Oh my god. <laughs> but, oh. Damn, let's go. I'm breaking my analog stick tonight, boys. <laughs> you should have never tried to rush me with all your most powerful guys. Perfect rush. Piece of cake. Get him, Vegeta. Whew. Damn, we almost killed him. <laughs> Prince's counter rush three times damage. Damn. He lost, right? That's it. I don't need, unless he kills me right away after this, but I don't know if that ends his attack turn or what. Did he just rage quit? Double mode, never mind. Hero types unite. Oh no, I lost. Oh my god. Jesus. Okay, you're rushing me. I see I, I might have misspoke. Oh my double dragon fist! These, these animations are hilarious, dude. I'm blitzing this guy after this. His team is gonna be so burnt out. Triple attack! Elite types! Jesus. You ever think maybe enough is enough when it comes to beatings? Give me a chance to defend. 50%. Alright, no problem. Oh, 100. Okay, never mind. I clearly misunderstood the rules. Oh. Off the top rope. As long as we don't lose here, I'm pretty confident we can win. Oh, we're, we're dead. We are so dead. Deal critical stamina damage. Wow, that sucks. 
That's my that's my super rare card too. Oh, that was too close. Now it's my turn though. On the attack. Give me God, come him. Yes, we win. We win. We win. All I have to do is draw G, boys. You have no idea how much preschool taught me. I'm about to, I'm about to show this man that I know how to draw my G's. One, two, three, four, five. Dude, say your last words. You're about to get wiped off. Ultra Instinct activated. Mastered it. 1500 power. Say goodbye. This is going to kill him right here. This is enough. Ooh, there it is, boys. We take our first win online. And it's just as easy as that, really. It's just as easy as that. All you got to do is counter with Vegeta and you'll take the win. Every day of the week. Mission complete. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much Dragon Ball Heroes. I gotta say, I do think there's a decent effort to take this arcade game and make it into a complete home experience with enough content that I can personally warrant spending 60 bucks on it. If you aren't too sure about the card aspect of it, though, maybe wait for a price drop. And if you watch this video and the gameplay and it really felt like it wasn't for you, then it probably isn't. What you see is what you get with this game on a very literal level. Make sure to go down below in the comments and let me know what you thought of the video as well as your thoughts on Super Dragon Ball World Heroes if you played it. While you're down there, if you like this video and and the channel make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more dragon ball content like this one and maybe even some more dragon ball heroes content in the future other than that there's some videos up on your screen that you can feel free to check out if any of them interest you i'm dr doya and i'll see you in the next one